Last week, we concluded our series on the book of Ruth, which is Old Testament, right? And today, we are going back to the New Testament, and we are beginning a short series, a short series in the Gospel of John. La semana pasada, concluimos nuestra serie sobre el libro de Ruth, que está en el Antiguo Testamento. Hoy volvemos al Nuevo Testamento y comenzamos una breve serie basada en el Evangelio de Juan. All right. Now this will be a short series in the Gospel of John because after today we will only study seven statements, seven statements that Jesus made in the Gospel of John. Now these are usually referred to as the I am statements. How many are familiar with the seven I am statements? Okay, good. This is Esta this is será good. We're una serie some. corta en el Evangelio de Juan porque después de hoy solo cubriremos siete declaraciones que Jesús hizo en este libro. Estos generalmente se conocen como las siete afirmaciones o declaraciones de yo soy. Levante la mano si ustedes conocen estas siete afirmaciones. Now, uh, John and Israel and I had a little bit of a disagreement on how to title the series. So it may change next week. Who's preaching next week? Do we know? Okay, so Izzy may change it back to the He Is series. We're not sure yet, so, all right. Dice que van a, potencialmente van a hacer un cambio al título de esta serie, uh, Él Es. Okay, to start a new book of the Bible, as is our practice here at the bridge, I want to give you some of the background information on the Gospel of John. Antes de continuar, siempre que empezamos una nueva serie en un nuevo evangelio, antes de hacerlo, quiero dar algunos antecedentes del evangelio de Juan. Okay, first, this is a gospel, okay? In a gospel, the gospels are at the beginning of the New Testament. They tell about the life ministry, the death, and resurrection of Jesus, which means it's an historical book, it's biographical. Each of the Gospels, and there's four of them, each of the Gospels gives an historic account of the events of his life, his ministry, death, and resurrection, okay? Yes, the resurrection is an historical event. It did happen, all right? All the Gospels share a common goal and purpose as well. Primero, este es un evangelio. Los evangelios están al principio del Nuevo Testamento. Cuentan la vida, la muerte y la resurrección de Jesús. Lo que significa que es un libro histórico. Sí, sí es un hecho histórico que Jesús haya resucitado. Cada uno de los evangelios da registros históricos de su vida, de su ministerio, de su muerte y de su resurrección. Todos tienen el mismo propósito. Now, the, the goal in mind, when these writers wrote the four gospels, they had a goal in mind, that is to convince the reader, that would be you and I, who Jesus is. Notice I didn't say inform, this is not about information. It's about convincing. There is a convincing going on here, and that's the re that is the intent of the, of the author. Why? Because he wants to create a response. He wants us to respond. He wants us to believe in Christ as the Savior. The Gospels writers wanted the reader to make a choice about Jesus based upon what they are telling us about Jesus, okay? Todos los evangelios están escritos con un objetivo en mente. El primero es para convencer al lector de quién es Jesús. Observemos que no dije informar, sino convencer. Es un escrito en donde estamos tratando de convencer quién es Jesús. Estamos creando una respuesta, creer en Cristo como su salvador. Now, I want you to know something. Belief, believe the word, the word believe is a key word in this gospel. The word believe occurs more times in this one gospel 
than in all the other three put together. Okay, so there's a point. When, you know, when you know this, there's a point being made here. John writes this near the end of the book. He says in John 20, 31, but these are written, what are these? He's right talking about what he just said, but these are written so that you may, may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Now, let me add this, and this is not in your notes, okay, so this came to me this morning. <laughs> let me add this. The idea of believe is not just agreeing with the writer, agreeing with what he says. It starts there, but belief, the, the belief he is talking about is the belief that is followed by a changed life. Because what you believe about Jesus is going to change the way you see and understand all of life. Vemos que la palabra creer es una palabra clave en el Evangelio de Juan. La palabra creer aparece más veces en el Evangelio de Juan que en los otros tres Evangelios combinados. Juan escribe esto cerca del final del libro. En Juan 20, 31 dice, Pero estas se han escrito para que ustedes crean que Jesús es el Cristo, el Hijo de Dios, y para que al creer en su nombre tengan vida. Ahora nos menciona algo el pastor Hoover que significa que creer en en Jesús, en quién fue Jesús, no significa estar de acuerdo con el lector, sin, significa el comienzo de creer en Jesús y empezar un camino de aprendizaje de él. Thank you. Okay. So, who was John the writer? Who was the guy that wrote this book? First of all, he's not John the Baptist, okay? Not John the Baptist. I mean, that's a very common misunderstanding. John the Baptist is mentioned at the beginning of the book, it's true, but he's not the writer of the book. No, it's the Apostle John. Now, John was one of the 12 that Jesus chose to be with him, okay? ¿Quién era Juan? Pensamos tal vez Juan el Bautista, no. Sí es mencionado el, el inicio de este libro, pero estamos hablando del apóstol Juan, uno de los doce discípulos que Jesús escogió para estar con él. Now, John was a fisherman when Jesus called him. And he called his brother James as well. He called them to follow him. Mark 1.20 records this. And immediately he, Jesus, called them... He's referring to Peter, James, and John. They were fishing by the ocean. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and they followed him. So John was with Jesus throughout his three years of public ministry, and he witnessed all that Jesus said and did, including, now listen, this is very important. Well, let me ask you this. How many of you know what the transfiguration was in Matthew 17? How many of you are familiar with the tr transfiguration was? Where Jesus took J James, P or, uh, John, Peter, James, and John up on a mountain, and he was transfigured before them. It says he, it's like he glowed white in their presence, and then the Father spoke directly to the Son. That was the transfiguration. John was there for that. Juan, ¿quién era Juan? Era un pescador cuando Jesús lo llamó y a su hermano Santiago para que lo siguieran. En Marcos 1.20 nos dice, enseguida los llamó y ellos, hablando de Pedro, Santiago y Juan, dejando a su padre se vedeó en la barca con los, con los jornaleros, se fueron con Jesús. Así que Juan estuvo con Jesús a lo largo de sus tres años de ministerio público y fue testigo de todo lo que Jesús dijo e hizo. También el pastor Hoover nos habla de algo llamado la transfiguración. Levanten la mano si alguien recuerda lo que significa la transfiguración, donde en el monte Jesús se mostró ante la presencia de Pedro, Santiago y Juan para 
enseñarles y mostrarles cómo Dios habló directamente con Jesús y Jesús resplandeció delante de ellos. Now, interestingly enough, John, in his gospel, five times refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Now, why would he do that? Well, we don't really know. We don't know. However, John does emphasize the use of the word love in his gospel 57 times. Again, more than any other gospel. And love does seem to be a theme in his other writings. También se refiere a sí mismo en su evangelio como aquel a quien Jesús amaba, Jesús amaba a Juan. ¿Por qué? No sé, sin embargo, él enfatiza el uso de la palabra amor en su evangelio 57 veces. Y el amor parece ser un tema en algunos otros escritos. Así que él cinco veces dijo que aquel a quien Jesús amaba. Now, John also wrote four other New Testament books, okay? Three epistles, first, second, and third John, which appear near the end of the Old Te or New Testament. So he's the same writer of those books. And what, were, what are epistles? What kind of letters? They're letters of instruction to the church, right? And then he also wrote the Revelation, not Revelations, the Revelation which is a prophetic book talking about the end times in the church. So John's writings, John and his writings carry a lot of weight in the New Testament. ¿Quién era Juan? Juan escribió cuatro de los libros del Nuevo Testamento. Escribió las epístolas a las iglesias de primero, segundo y tercero de Juan. También escribió Apocalipsis. Okay. Now, finally, about John, who was John. This is, this is according to tradition, not, this is not in the Bible itself. But tradition says that he eventually left Jerusalem where the New Testament church started, so he was a part of that. And he ended up in Ephesus as the leader of the church in Ephesus years later, okay? He was also exiled to the island of Patmos at one point for a period of time during the Roman persecution of the church. But he eventually returned to Ephesus where he died. Now, it's also recorded, and this is interesting, by the theologian Tertullian that during the persecution, the Romans tried to boil him in oil, but he lived. Can you imagine that? La tradición dice, ojo, no la Biblia, dice que Juan dejó Jerusalén y llegó a Efesio. Él después fue exiliado a la isla de Patmos por los romanos. Eventualmente, él llegó a Efesios donde después finalmente murió. Y es, cree, se cree que en el punto de que los romanos trataron de de hervirlo en aceite, pero él sobrevivió. Okay. Now, what makes this gospel unique? What makes it different from the others, okay? Well, I want you to look at some specific verses in the introduction of John. The introduction itself is unique to John, okay? But in the introduction, we're going to look at four specific verses. John 1.1, in the beginning was the word. Now, in the beginning, does anybody know what other book of the Bible starts with Genesis. in the beginning? Genesis. Genesis. So immediately the writer takes us back to the book of Genesis. In the writer, in the beginning was the word. Now, who's the word referring to, do you think? Jesus, Jesus himself, all right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him not anything was made that was made. Now skip down to verse 14. I don't mean to 
You can read the other verses. They're very informative. But at this point, we're just going to skip down to verse 14. And in verse 14, it says, And the word, Jesus, now listen to this, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Now that may be a reference back to that transcend, the Mount of Transfiguration I talked about. And then the final statement, full of what? Grace and truth. Comencemos con la introducción de Juan, este libro, al, fin, al principio dice Juan 1.1. En el principio ya existía el verbo y el verbo estaba con Dios y el verbo era Dios. Veamos una similitud que al principio de este enunciado, de este versículo, dice en el principio. Y recordemos que otro libro de la Biblia empieza de esta manera. Es Génesis, en Génesis dice en el principio de Y el número, el versículo 1, 2 dice Él estaba con Dios en el principio El versículo 1, 3 dice Por medio de Él todas las cosas fueron creadas Sin Él nada de lo creado llegó a existir Ahora brinquemos al Versículo 14, si ustedes gustan pueden leer lo demás que también tiene mucha información ahí, pero vamos a leer el versículo 1.14. El versículo 14 dice, y el verbo se hizo hombre y habitó entre nosotros y hemos contemplado su gloria, la gloria que corresponde al Hijo unigénito del Padre, lleno de gracia y de verdad. So what? What is John saying about Jesus in this introduction? Two things, okay? Number one, he, Jesus, is God. And secondly, Jesus is God in the flesh. Incarnate is the word. Dwelling among us, okay? Now, I want to make something clear. This is where we differ in our faith from Mormonism or Jehovah Witnesses. This is very important. Are there two gods? No. There is one God functioning in two roles at the same time. How is that possible? I don't know. That's who God is. Muy bien, ahora lo que dice Juan acerca de Jesús en esta introducción es que Jesús es Dios, que Jesús es Dios en la carne que habita entre nosotros. Ahora, hay una diferencia entre el mormonismo y los testigos de Jehová, a diferencia de nosotros, hay dos dioses, no, hay un solo Dios funcionando en dos roles. ¿Cómo lo puede hacer Dios? No sabemos, pero sabemos que es todopoderoso. Now, this theme that is actually through the book, the theme that Jesus is God, and it's, it is there throughout the book. He emphasizes it throughout the book, and which is important. Keep that in mind as, you, as we go through these seven statements because they are the foundation for the seven I am statements. Ahora, Jesús es Dios. Es esto, esta palabra dice que es un cimiento para los siete, los siete declaraciones de yo soy que vamos a ver a continuación. Okay. All right. So let's just very briefly, what are these seven statements that we've been talking about here? And here they are. John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. John 10, 7, I am the door of the sheep. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. John 11, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then John 15, 1, 
I am the true vine. Muy bien, los siete enunciados, estos siete declaraciones, el primero dice en Juan 6:35, Jesús les dijo, yo soy el pan de la vida. Juan 8, 12 nos dice, el segundo enunciado, yo soy la luz del mundo. El tercer enunciado en Juan 10, 7 dice, yo soy la puerta de las ovejas. El cuarto enunciado o la cuarta declaración de Jesús es en Juan 10, 11, dice, yo soy el buen pastor. La quinta declaración de Jesús dice, en Juan 11, 25, yo soy la resurrección y la vida. El sexto enunciado en Juan 14, 6, dice, yo soy el camino, la verdad y la vida. Y la última declaración, número 7, en Juan 15, 1, dice, yo soy la vid verdadera. Now, let me say something, this is not the nose. Between now and the next seven weeks, when we go through this, here's what I would I encourage you to do. Read the book of John, okay? Read through this book on your own, is, so that when we get to these statements, you're going to have a little bit more information in your head, all right? Muy bien, dice el pastor Hubert, que entre hoy y las próximas siete semanas, por favor, lean el libro de Juan, para que tengan un poco más de información antes de venir a la iglesia y escuchar la palabra. Esto es lo que vamos a estar viendo de aquí a, a siete semanas después. Now, in each statement, Jesus is telling us how he meets our greatest needs, as only he can do. He is the one who created us, and only he can complete us. It is the person of God that completes us, not things. The person of God, not things. En cada declaración, Jesús nos dice cómo satisfacer nuestras mayores necesidades, cómo Él las satisface, cómo solo Él puede hacerlo. Él es quien nos creó y solo Él puede completarnos. Es la persona de Dios la que nos completa, no las cosas materiales. Repito, es la persona de Dios la que nos completa, no las cosas materiales. Now it is important that as we go through these statements that we note two things, two things. Number one, who is Jesus addressing each time he makes a statement? Who is he talking to? Because that's very important. And then number two, how do they respond? Because that's also very important. Remember, why did the writers write these gospels? So that we would respond to who Jesus is. So who is he speaking to? How did they respond each time? Ahora, es muy importante que a medida que avanzamos en estas declaraciones, notemos dos cosas. Pensemos, ¿con quién estaba hablando Jesús en cada declaración que él hacía? Y la segunda pregunta es, ¿cómo respondieron la persona o las personas a la que él les decía estas declaraciones? Okay, we're getting near the end here. Let me, let me take you to one last passage, and we'll, I'm going to ask those same two questions, okay? By the way, this, this is an I am statement that we didn't include in our list because I wanted to use it this morning. John 8, 58 and 59, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Who is he speaking to? Does anybody know? He was talking to the religious leaders in the temple, okay? What was he claiming? Be God. See, Jesus was identifying himself by saying, I am That's the same name that God used when Moses spoke to him in the burning bush. And God, Moses asks, 
who should I say is sending me? And what did God say? I am who I am. Wow, that just, it almost gives me chills to think about that. Jesus identifies with the same God that Moses spoke to. How did they respond? They tried to kill him. Muy bien, déjame llevarte a un último pasaje. Casi llegamos al final. Aquí vamos a ver una octava declaración que no quise incluir anteriormente, pero la quería utilizar en este momento. Y haremos las mismas dos preguntas. Déjame leerlo. Por cierto, esto no está incluido en la lista porque quería usarlo específicamente para el mensaje de hoy. En Juan 8, del 58 al 59, Jesús les dijo, «De cierto, de cierto os digo, antes que Abraham fuese, yo soy». En Juan 8.59 dice, entonces tomaron piedras para tirárselas, pero Jesús se escondió y salió del templo. ¿A quién le está hablando Jesús? ¿Les, ¿Alguien sabe? Le está hablando a los líderes religiosos del templo. Jesús se identificaba y esta manera en la que se, eh, él estaba afirmando ser Dios, él afirma ser el mismo Dios que le habló a Moisés en la zarza ardiente en el desierto. Decía, yo soy quien soy. Él les decía esto en la salsa ardiente en el desierto antes de que Dios sacara a los judíos de Egipto. ¿Cómo respondieron? Estos intentaron matarlo. How many of you in a conversation have ever mentioned the word Jesus and then watch people sort of back away? You seen that? Isn't it interesting? ¿Cuántos de ustedes han hablado en una conversación? Y siendo partícipes de esta conversación, han mencionado el nombre de Jesús y ustedes notan cómo hay personas que se retractan y no quieren ser partícipes de cierta conversación. Sí, who Jesus is provokes a response in us. Ultimately, we will worship and obey him or we will deny him. And there's no in between. You cannot be neutral about Jesus. ¿Quién es, el, je, ¿Quién es Jesús? Provoque en nosotros una respuesta. En última instancia, lo adoraremos y lo obedeceremos o lo negamos. No hay término medio. No hay término medio en querer a Jesús o adorar y obedecer o bien negarlo. Es uno o el otro. You can't say he was just a good man or a just leader because he never claimed that for himself. He never claimed those things about himself. He claims to be the God of the universe. No puedes decir que él era simplemente un buen hombre o un gran líder religioso porque él nunca afirmó ser esas cosas. Afirma ser el Dios del universo. How will we respond? Let's pray. ¿Cómo responderemos? Vamos a orar. And I'm going to pray so that you can pray with me. Yes. Okay. Va a orar de modo que yo también pueda orar junto con él, porque la otra vez me dejó sin poder orar con él. Lord Jesus, when we read these words that you've given us, they move us deep within our hearts. Jesús, eh, mueve nuestros corazones recibiendo tu palabra, Señor. They make us understand and realize just who Jesus is. Esto nos hace entender justamente quién es Jesús. And we each know that we are responsible for how we choose to either worship and obey Jesus or to walk away from him. Esto nos hace escoger caminar junto con Jesús o bien caminar, alejarnos de Jesús. Father, if any of us here this morning feel like we're on the fence about this, help us to realize that we cannot be on the fence. We must make a choice and live our life accordingly. Padre, si no hemos decidido aún qué es lo que queremos hacer en cuanto a seguir tu palabra, Señor, por favor, ayúdanos a ya no tener esta incertidumbre, ayúdanos a escoger el camino correcto, Señor. In Jesus name. 
Amen. En el nombre de Jesús oramos. Amén.